طيب بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن ولا وبعد This evening, بإذن الله تعالى, this is our third session reading from uh, the book Al-Quran حبل الله الممدود يعني the Quran, Allah's outstretched rope and this is the first part of يعني the topic, the second part being كان خلقه القرآن يعني his character was the Quran and both of these topics are presented by the Shaykh Abdul Razak, the son of Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abad Al-Badr حفيدهم الله, may Allah protect and preserve both of them Our discussion tonight is going to center around primarily, most importantly um, the three matters which are necessary in order for a person to fulfill the obligation, the obligation towards the Qur'an, yani learning the Qur'an. Um, before we look at the topic for tonight, we want to quickly review some of the points that we discussed last week, yani from the study guide number two. No problem. Yani I, I don't think we have any more copies of the book, except in Arabic. If somebody needs Arabic, there are a few copies here. Otherwise, the English, I think they distributed all of them. Now. Okay, so whoever has the study guide from last week, then uh, let's kind of go through it quickly. First question being, discuss the meaning of yani the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى yani Whoever follows my guidance shall neither go astray nor fall into misery. Yani 20th surah of the Quran, 123rd ayat. Yani we want to yani get the gist a summary of the meaning of this ayat. Whoever follows my guidance shall neither go astray nor fall into misery. Now, Musa. It's not, it's going to be on guidance, it's, it's going to be happy. Now, yani, this ayah is dealing with the two important points. Yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he negates misguidance and he negates yani, the person being in a state of misery or wretchedness. If a person follows the guidance. So it shows the importance of the Quran and the guidance that came in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever follows it, the guidance that I have sent to you, if you follow it, then you will not be astray, you will not be misguided. Meaning, yani you will not be misguided, meaning you will be guided. You will not be in misery, you will not be in a state of wretchedness. Meaning, you will what? You will have happiness. So that the Quran is the source of guidance and it's also the source of happiness for a person in this world and in the next. This is the core meaning of this particular ayat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating here these two things, a person being astray and a person being yani, in misery. The second question, discuss the statement of Shaykh al-Mufassirin, rahimahullah, concerning those who read the Qur'an without knowing its meanings. First, before we uh, discuss yani, the statement, who is Shaykh al-Mufassirin? What does the Shaykh mean by this statement? Now. He means Al-Imam Al-Tabari, Imam Al-Tabari, Naam, yani Ibn Jarir Al-Tabari, Rahimahullah. He is the Imam of the scholars of Tafsir, and all of the scholars who came after him, their Tafsirs are based on, or summarized of, or branched from the Tafsir of Al-Imam Al-Tabari. So Imam Al-Tabari, he said, yani, what is it that he said concerning those who read the Quran without knowing its meanings? What was the statement? of Al-Imam Al-Tabari, Naam uh, Mustafa. Yeah, he was uh, astonished by uh, the one who read the Quran without uh, understanding its meaning and he questioned how he would address uh, its recitation. Naam, he was astonished, he was amazed at a person who reads the Quran without understanding its meaning, without knowing what it means. Yani, how is it that a person can read the Quran and they don't know what it means? And they are content with this. He said, how can that person taste yani, the sweetness of the Qur'an if they don't? And if they read it without understanding, without comprehension. And today we find 
Uh, there are many people who are reading Quran, yani, as they say, for barakah. Yani, if they just read it, they don't know what it means, they don't have a clue. Yani, it's just like reading the newspaper in a foreign language that you don't understand for them. So he was amazed at this. Yani, he's, I'm amazed at the one who reads the Quran and he doesn't know its meaning. How can they enjoy? Yani, how can they take pleasure in the reading of the Quran? The third question, memorize an ayah when Allah commands us with tadabbur of the Quran. And there were several ayahs that the Shaykh mentioned. Somebody give me one of them, Yani Shu'ayb. Type. somebody give me the meaning of this ayah that he just mentioned. What is the meaning of this ayah? <laughs> Would you not reflect upon the Quran or are the Quran then sent upon parts that are locked up? Naam. Do they not reflect upon the Quran, ponder over the meanings of the Quran, or is it that the Quran is sent down upon hearts that have locks on them? Yani that they are locked and unable, therefore, to understand the Quran, to comprehend the Quran. Naam. Another ayat that the Shaykh mentioned, Musa. <laughs> Now, somebody tell me what is the meaning of this ayah? Translation. Somebody else. Now, uh, Saad. Uh, they not reflect upon the ayah of the Quran the Quran? If it was revealed, um, other than Allah, they would have found a lot of uh, contradiction. Now, the ayah begins the same, Quran, but then he says, if it had been from other than Allah, if it had been something that came from other than Allah, they would have found in it many yani iktilaf and kathir many contradictions yani would have been contradicting itself but because it's from allah then there's not there's no contradiction in it uh, please let's go to the next question number four mention some of the harms that will result from a person's being distance from the quran and reflection upon it some of the harms that result from a person who's distance from the quran now mustafa huh Heedlessness. Okay, heedlessness. Now, uh, losing out on the happiness of this life and the next. Losing out on the happiness of this life and the next. Now, and the Sheikh mentioned about five things specifically, and those are included generally. Now, corruption and loss. Okay, that the people who are distanced from the Quran, yani from the yani harms that came to them, is corruption. They became corrupt. People became corrupted from not having guidance of the Quran. Also, he said. Deviation and hiraf. Yeah, a person would deviate. They would go away from the straight path if they don't have guidance of the Quran. Also, he said al halak, al halak. Yeah, they will be destroyed. Yeah, destruction from not following the guidance of the Quran. What else? He said al dalal, al halak, al diya, al diya. Al-Zayg al-Inhiraf. Yani, that they would be misguided, they would be destroyed, they would, be, they would fall into deviation, corruption, and perversion. And perversion. The people who are not, yani, benefiting from the guidance of the Qur'an. Question number five. Discuss the indications of this statement. Have they not pondered over the word, yani, the word of Allah? Or has there come to them what had not come to their fathers of old. Yani 23rd surah, 68th ayat. Yani, afalam yaddabbarul qawl. Yani, what are some of the indications or what is the main indication of this particular statement? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is questioned. Yani, have they not pondered over the word? Naam. Naam, Musa. Yani if they had pondered over the Quran, yani if they had read it with reflection, contemplation, looking at its meaning, thinking about it, reflecting over it, then they would not have turned on their heels. They would not have ran from the Quran. They would not have been, and then they would not have been misguided. They would not have gone astray if they had pondered over the Quran. But they, yani outright rejected it without even considering it, without even looking at it carefully. Now, question number six, mention some of the reasons why the Qur'an is referred to as dhikr, reminder or admonition. Some of the reasons that the Shaykh mentioned, and he mentioned five or six or seven different things, Ibrahim. Mention 
Yani because it mentions, yani it, re, it, it mentions and reminds us of the history of those who came before us and what benefit we came from that, as well as what is going to come after us, as well as what is going to happen in the future. The Quran mentions this and makes us to benefit from it. Also, the Quran reminds us of, mentions and reminds us of <laughs> the names of Allah, yani the asma of Allah and the sifat of Allah mentioned in the Quran. Now, uh, It mentions yani, the ahkam, yani, the commands of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah. Naam. It mentions the paradise and the hellfire and reminds us of this, that the de- destination, and yani, of those who believe and do good deeds, yani, the reward that Allah has promised for them, it reminds us of this. And also the destination of those who disbelieve and disobey Allah, what will be the consequence of their disobedience? Naam. Anything else? Rulings, yani the ahkam, now rulings, prohibitions, commands, huh? Dhikrul kulub, huh? Also, it's a reminder for the heart. Yani the Quran itself is a is a is a means of remembrance for the heart. Yani it's the life of the heart. Yani the hearts have life by the remembrance of Allah. Allah bi dhikri lahi tatman al kulub, and and beyond that. Also. Uh, what is the result of distancing oneself from Al-Qur'an in consideration of it being the dhikr? Yani in consideration of the fact that Allah, so many places in the Qur'an mentions it as a dhikr. So if a person distanced himself from the Qur'an, then what will be the consequence of this? Then they would, naam? They will be from the people who are heedless. They will be from the ghafilin. Yani if a person is not reminded by attaching themselves to the Qur'an, then they will be unmindful, they will be heedless, they will be yani, neglectful if they didn't get the reminder from the Qur'an. Question number 8, discuss the parable which describes the powerful effect of the Qur'an even upon an inanimate created being. And this parable is mentioned in 59th Surah 21st Ayat. What is the parable that Allah mentions? Yani, what is the meaning of this parable? Naam, Abdul Halim. <coughs> Okay, if Allah had revealed the Qur'an upon a mountain, yani a solid rock mountain, then it would cause it to crumble. It would be humbled out of fear of Allah. So what is the meaning of this parable? Yani it's a parable. Allah said if He had revealed the Qur'an upon a mountain, it would, it would tremble, it would crumble, it would fall to, crumble to pieces. So what's the point here, yani, in comparison to what? Now, instead of them uh, <laughs> being humbled by it, their hearts are being hardened. Okay, hardened. so the human being's heart, yani, which is to receive the Quran as a guidance, if it was revealed upon a mountain, it would crumble. But yet there are human beings whose hearts are not even moved by the Quran. So Allah is showing us in this parable the power of the Quran. How powerful it is that it will make a mountain crumble. Yet, those who disbelieve and who are rebellious, it doesn't affect them at all. Uh, question number nine. Summarize the speech of Al-Alama Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, concerning the end of those whose hearts are not affected by the Quran. Yani summarize what Ibn Qayyim said concerning those whose hearts are not moved, are not softened, are not yani, affected by the Quran. What will be the end of these people? Naam. Because um, their, their hearts hasn't been affected by the Quran, been humbled by it, therefore they deserve hell. Is, um, what is most deserving for them? Naam. So Ibn Qayyim, he mentions yani, what should happen to the heart. Yani how it should be softened, how it should be humbled, how it should be affected, how a person should experience the khasha of Allah from the Qur'an, from the mention of Allah. But yet, if, a, if hearts are not moved, if they are not inclined towards Allah and obedience to Allah by the Qur'an, then Allah is going to bring that which will, will affect the hearts. <laughs> that is the hellfire, Naam, the punishment for those who disbelieve and disobey Allah. And the last question, Yani, memorize the supplication of the Prophet 
which is a means of removal of one's worries, distress, and grief. Memorize. Naam. <laughs> Memorize. Wa alaykum salam wa ta'ala Now, ya Mustafa. Naam. Bikulli ism. Bikulli ism. Naam. Ahadan <laughs> Alhamd, naam. Tayyip, in the beginning of this supplication, the Shaykh didn't mention it, but the beginning of the supplication, anybody memorize the first words of the supplication before what the Shaykh mentioned? <laughs> For extra points? <laughs> naam, bonus points. Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ, it's mentioned in the authentic hadith that he said there's no person who has been afflicted with yani, yani worry, anxiety, grief, sorrow. And they recited this supplication. Oh Allah, I am your Abd and I am the son of your Abd, meaning his father and the son of your female, yani Amma, yani his mother. I am your slave. And I'm the, and even my mother and your father are your slaves. He mentioned this, and then he said, "Yani after that what? Nasiati fiyadik. Yani meaning you have complete power over me. Yani my forelock is in your hand, meaning that Allah has complete power over him. And then he said, "More than fiya hukmuk. Yani that your judgment, your ruling is to be executed. Yani ongoing. Yani more than wa." Adlun fiya qadauk and your your decree, whatever you have decreed, yani in the divine decree, then it is yani whatever you have decreed for me is just. Yani this is showing a person's submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complete acceptance, surrender to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for them. And then after this introductory, then he said, As aluka. Now he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by every name that belongs to you. Sammayta bihi nafsak that you have named yourself with. That you have named yourself with. And then he said, yani, to the end of the supplication, that yani, the categories of the names of Allah, that either they are names which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, yani, has, inf- has taught to one of his created beings, whether prophets or messengers or angels or whoever, or names that he has revealed in his book that's available to everyone, or names that Allah has kept yani, to himself in the knowledge of the unseen. So there are different names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst them are the names that everybody can know. That's in the Qur'an, in the Revelation, in the Sunnah. And there are names that Allah only taught to some creatures, some of the angels, or to the prophets or messengers that everybody doesn't know. And then there are names that are only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And he's saying, I ask you by every name that belongs to you, every name that you have named yourself, whether it's from that which is in the Qur'an, or that you have taught which to any of, the, of your servants, or yani, that which you kept with yourself. That you make and tajal Qur'ana rabiya qalbi. That you make the Qur'an the spring of my heart, wa nur sadri, and that it will be what? The light. And then he said what? Jila'a huzni. Yani that it will be that which will remove yani my huzn, sadness, sorrow. Yani, and that which will be the haba hammi. Yani it will take away my worries, anxieties. This supplication, at the end of the hadith, it is said that they asked, Ya Rasulullah, shall a person yani, learn this? He said, every person who hears it should learn it. So we say, yani, that every person who heard it, they should learn it. And we should recite it. And we are in need of it. Yani, even if a person, generally speaking, is, doesn't have yani, a lot of anxiety or worry, or grief or sorrow, but every human being experiences to some extent this. And this is a condition that everyone can find relief from 
yani by this dua and by implementing yani what is understood from it that is to yani devote ourselves to the Quran to turn ourselves to the Quran okay tonight bismillah ta'ala uh, the topic that we are going to talk about continuation with tonight um, as i said is dealing with yani learning the Quran recitation of the Quran and what it entails yani more than just yani reading of the mushaf so the shaykh begins by the way um, last week we read in the english translation of the book from the top of page 20 to the bottom of 30, 32 so that's what we're going to start at today in the english translation at the bottom of page 32 and in arabic last week we read from the middle of page 9 to the bottom of page 16 so we're going to start in Arabic, on the bottom of page 16. If you're reading in Arabic, it's on the bottom of the last paragraph from page 16. In English, it's on the bottom of page 32. And the Shaykh, he begins here by saying, Walihada. Yani here he's referring to yani this supplication and how the, sub, the benefits of this supplication, how yani it will remove yani a person's worry and concern and anxiety and grief and sorrow. It will remove all of this and it will replace, it will be replaced with happiness. But this will not happen by a person just casually reading Quran or speeding through the Quran. Rather, this will only be for the one who reads the Quran with understanding and comprehension. And the one who acts upon the Quran. Yani, the happiness, the a good fortune that comes to a person from the Quran, from the sweetness of the Quran and the good life that is achieved by Yani adhering to the Quran, this will not occur except for the person who reflects and contemplates, understands the meanings of the Quran and acts upon it. Okay, so now here, that's what we finished with last week. That was the last thing that we read last week. Here the Shaykh says, for this reason, yani that a person will not achieve happiness and taste the sweetness of the Quran, except that they ponder over its meanings, reflect upon its meaning, understand its meanings, and then act upon it. Therefore, the Shaykh says, وَلِهَذَا قَالَ غَيْرَ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ فِي مَعْنَ قَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَلَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَاكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ Yani, it is for this reason that غَيْرَ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ Yani, many, more than one of the scholars, of the people of knowledge, concerning this ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, second surah, 121st ayat, they said, yani, the ayat is those who we have given the book. Yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, الَّذِينَ أَتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ The scholars of tafsir say that this means the Ahl kitab Christians and Jews, or it means the Muslims. And the meaning that's applicable here, yani, it's for the Muslims. الَّذِينَ أَتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابِ yani, Those who we have given the book to, yani, who the Qur'an has come to, يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Yani, they recite it as it should be recited. They recite it as it should be recited. Ulaka al bi. These are those who believe in it. Yani, those who yatlunu haqqa tilawatihi. So, what is included in this? He said the scholars of ilm, many of them said that the meaning here is that haqqa tilawatihi la yutimmu illa bi thalathati umur. Yani, this reciting the Qur'an as it should be recited, it will not be completed, nor will it be perfected, except with three things occurring. And then he mentions two of them, and later on, a few pages later, he mentions the third of them. The first of them, yani, that is intended by haqqa tilawatihi, reciting the Qur'an the way it should be recited, yani, reciting the Qur'an with its full rights, with its haqq, with its rights. It includes first and foremost Al-Amr Al-Awwal, Qiraatul Qur'an, Wa Husnu Tartilihi, Wa Hibdhu Ma Tayassara Minhu. This is the first thing, the first matter that's necessary in order for a person to give the Qur'an is right in terms of yani, what is required by it. That is, reading the Qur'an, Wa Husnu Tartilihi, yani, to recite it in a slow, rhythmic tone. Yani, meaning to recite the Qur'an not hastily, hurriedly, but to take your time and to recite it well. وَحِفْذُ مَا تَيَسْرَ مِنْهُ And then to memorize whatever has been made easy, easy for a person to memorize. So this, yani, the first matter, it is reading the Qur'an, reciting it well, 
and memorizing whatever one is able to memorize from it. If a person is not able to memorize the whole of the Qur'an, then at least memorize some of it. Memorize half of it, memorize a third of it, memorize some parts of it, whatever one is able to do. And everybody is going to be different. But the point is, this is the first rite of the Qur'an over us, that we read it, that we recite it properly, well, and that we memorize whatever we are able to memorize of it. The second matter that's necessary in order to give the Qur'an its right is Al-Amr al-Thani al-Tadabbur wa fahmu al-Khitab Yani it is that a person ponder over the Qur'an that they reflect and contemplate over the Qur'an so that they may understand the message that Allah has sent to us Yani the per- no one will understand the Qur'an without reading it with care Yani without reflection, contemplation but without pondering over it so this is the second matter that is not just reading the Qur'an beautifully. As some people, mashallah, they are good reciters. When they recite, yani you feel good. You enjoy listening to them. And then that's the end of it though. No, it's not the end. Rather, it is incumbent upon us to reflect upon the Qur'an and to understand the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us. Here the Shaykh mentions a number of ayats as a proof for the need and the necessity of pondering over the Qur'an. He mentioned from Surah Al-Sa'ad first, 38th Surah, 29th ayat, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun li yaddabbaru ayatihi. Yani this is a book that we have sent down, we have sent it down to you, yani to the Prophet Sallallahu and he delivered it to the people. Mubarakun, full of barakah, full of blessings. لِيَدَّبَّرُ ayati, So that you may reflect upon its ayat. Yani Allah sent it down with the purpose, the intent, the objective that people would reflect upon it. Then he mentions also from Surah Al-Mu'minun, 23rd Surah, 68th ayat, أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْلِ Yani, did they not ponder over the word, yani, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, did they not ponder over it? Meaning that you are supposed to reflect and ponder and contemplate that which was sent to you, this speech, this qawl, yani the Qur'an, the kalamullah. Then the shaykh mentions after this, also, um, uh, Surah Al-Mu'minun, also, uh, that's 68th ayat, and here 24th ayat, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Yani, do they not reflect upon the Qur'an? The shaykh says, وَيَكُونُ حَمْهُ Yani here, this is a very important point here from yani what we're going to read from today and this is the core of the matter. Yani a person's concern يَكُونُ حَمْهُ وَهُوَ يَتْلُ الْقُرْآنَ Yani at the time while he is reciting the Qur'an his concern should not be when will I complete or conclude the surah? When will I get to the end of it? His concern should not be when will I finish the recitation. Recitation. When the man يَكُنُ حَمُّهُ هُوَ وَهُوَ يَتْلُ الْقُرْآنَ مَتَى عَاقِلُوا عَنِ اللَّهِ الْخِطَابِ مَتَى أَفْحَمُوا كَلَامُ اللَّهِ مَتَى يَتَأَثَّرُوا قَلْبِ بِالْقُرْآنَ مَتَى أَعْمَلُوا بِالْقُرْآنَ To the end of what the Shaykh said, يعني, when we read the Qur'an, for example, in Ramadan, we find that many people have decided in Ramadan they're going to read Qur'an, right? And they have to read one thirtieth of the Qur'an every day in order to finish it in 30 days. So... Their greatest concern in Ramadan is finishing. Yani getting through this 1 30th. 20 or 30 pages, whatever it is. Yani I have to finish it. Whether or not I understand any of it is not important. The point is, I have to read it. And in reality, there's no proof in the Quran or in the Sunnah that in Ramadan that a person has to read 1 30th of the Quran every day. Rather, yani, if a person is able, they should be reading more than 1 30th of the Quran every day in Ramadan outside of Ramadan. But the point is though, somehow we have this idea that we have to complete one thirtieth of the Qur'an. So the p- person's greatest concern is finishing this. How will I get through this today? Okay? And the shaykh is saying here something very important and it's not applicable to Ramadan. Rather, it's for all time that our concern should not be when or how will I complete or finish from the surah or what I'm reciting. Rather, my concern while I'm reciting the Qur'an should be when will I comprehend the khitab, yani the speech of Allah, the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the Qur'an. When will I understand the speech of Allah? When will my heart be affected by the Qur'an? Yani when will my heart be touched such that when I read the Qur'an, when I recite the Qur'an, 
It affects my heart and I feel something. It affects me, it moves me, it motivates me. It causes me to restrain, to refrain from that which I may have been thinking of doing from the whispering of shaitan. It moves me and motivates me and push me, empowers me to do the things that Allah has commanded to me when I feel lazy or I don't feel yani, that I want to do something. When will my heart be affected by the Quran? When will I act upon the Quran? Yani, this is what we should be concerned about when we're reciting the Quran. Yani, where's my action in reference to that which I'm reading in the Quran? Compliance with it. Yani, fulfilling Allah's commands and avoiding His prohibitions. Mata akunu mina sadiqina al mausufina bidalika fil Quran. Yani, when will I become one of those who are from the truthful? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes some people in the Quran, that they are the sadiqeen, they are the truthful, meaning truthful in their speech, yani, truthful in their heart, yani, in what they believe, truthful in their actions, in complying with that which is truth. When will I become from those people? When will I become from the tawwabina, those who repent, from the munibina, those who turn back to Allah, the dhakirina, the musallina, the qanitina, the musaddiqina, to the end of them, yani, when will I... Yani, become like those people who Allah describes in the Quran who are repentant, who are turning back to Him, who are remembering Him, who are performing prayer, who are obedient to Him, who are giving sadaqah and the other descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. When we are reciting the Quran, a person's should, concern should be, when will I become one of those who are described with these descriptions? When will I be like that? Here the Shaykh, he mentions a beautiful stay, a saying from one of the great scholars of the Sunnah, yani Al-Imam Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn al-Husayn al-Ajuri al-Baghdadi who died in the year 360 of the Hijrah, yani in the 4th century, second, he died in the second half of the 4th century after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu in the year 360. Al-Ajuri, he says, Al-Imam Al-Ajuri, rahimahullah says, وَمَنْ تَدَبَّرَ كَلَامَهُ عرف الرب عز وجل يعني whoever reflects ponders over his speech the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will have come to know the Rabb يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever reflects upon his speech will come to know him this will happen وعرف عظيم سلطانه and that person will have come to know the magnificent, the greatness of Allah's Sultan and His authority over the universe. And they will have come to know His Qudra, yani the power of Allah and the ability of Allah. And they will come to know yani the greatness and the magnificence of Allah's bestowal of His favors and bounties upon the believers. وَعَرَفَ مَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ فَرْضْ إِبَادَتِهِ And they will come to know يعني, what is obligatory. One will come to know what is obligatory upon you concerning يعني, the obligation of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person reflects upon his speech, then he will come to know Allah. He will come to know Allah's great sultan, his authority over you and everything in existence. And his power, his qudra to do whatever he wills, to reward or to punish or to give or to take back. You will know this. And you will know, and you will recognize and you will come to know the tafadl of Allah. Yani how He bestows His favors, His bounties, His blessings upon the believers. If a person came to know this, this will cause that person, yani also, yani he will come to know His obligation to worship Allah and this will cause a person to adhere to, to stick to, to cling to that which Yani force himself to do that which is obligatory upon him. Yani when a person knows Allah like this, this is what causes the person, propels the person, yani compels the person to adhere to the obligations, force his self, his soul to submit and surrender to that which Allah has made obligatory upon him and therefore that person would take precautions from whatever Allah has warned them from and they will be desirous of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites them to Yani meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us from cer certain things, then we will take precaution from those things. We will be careful to avoid them. And here the shaykh, he described Allah here as Mawlahu al-Kareem. And this is important that the shaykh use this kind of language because it has 
يعني extra meaning when you say وحضر مما حضره مولاه الكريم يعني it's not anybody who cautioned you who warned you against this rather it is the one يعني who cares for you who takes care of you who provides for you and protects you and he is generous and kind to you he is the one who has warned you from this therefore the believer when they come to know Allah they will avoid and take precaution from that which Allah warns them from and they will be desirous of that which Allah invites you to be desirous of and man kanat hadhi sifatuhu inda tilawatihi lil Quran wa inda istima'ihi min ghayrihi kan al Quran lahu shifa so whoever is described like this who has this description this is his description yani at the time when he's reciting the Quran or he is listening to it from someone else who is, who is reciting it yani meaning that he knows Allah and he recognizes and acknowledges and is conscious of Allah's authority and Allah's power and Allah's favor upon him and Allah's right over him to worship him the person who is described with this type of description then yani the Quran will be a shifa for him. It will be a cure and a healing for him. And as Allah said in the Quran in different places, yani He described the Quran as shifa'un, lima fi sudur. Yani that it is a cure, a healing for what is in the chest. Yani meaning the sicknesses of the human being. Not physical sicknesses, yeah, it's also a cure for physical sicknesses. But here we're talking about that which is in the chest, meaning the hypocrisy and hatred and animosity and enmity, and kufr, and all the diseases that are in the inner, internal part, internal aspect of the human being. Then the Quran will be a shifa for that. فَاسْتَغْنَا بِلَا مَالٍ This person then will be free of need. Yani the Quran will make them free of need even if they don't have money. They will be free of need even if they didn't have money. Yani meaning a person who doesn't have a lot of money. There are people who are rich and they are not free of need. They are always trying to get something. But then there are people who don't have much. If their heart is connected to the Quran, they will be content with what Allah has decreed for them. So that person will be yani, free of need, even if they didn't have any wealth, even if they didn't have any money. ashira, And they will be strong and powerful and respected, even without yani, a clan, even without a tribe, even without the, their people who will support and defend them, they will be strong without this. وَأَنِسَ مِنْمَا يَسْتَوْحِشُ مِنْهُ غَيْرُهُ And that person, yani, will be at ease. They will be at ease. From in the situation in which other people would be distressed from it, would be saddened by it. That person will be at ease. They will be comfortable. They will be happy in the situation that other people would be saddened by. وَكَانَ هَمُّهُ and the tilawa And here the shaykh describes yani, the, the topic of our discussion yani, more specifically that that person's concern at the time of reciting the Qur'an, reciting yani, tilawa to the surah إِذَا اِفْتَحْتَحَهَا مَتَى أَتَّعِذُ بِهَا بِمَا يَأْتْلُوا yani, That a person at the time when they are reciting the Qur'an, reciting a surah of the Qur'an at the time when they begin that recitation, they open up the Quran and they begin to recite a surah, yani their concern will be, yani when will I take a lesson? When will I learn a lesson? When will I, yani heed the warning when I'm reciting the Quran, what came in the Quran? Their intent or their desire or their goal will not be, yani when will I complete this surah? When will I finish from it? Rather their murad, their, yani hadaf, their goal, their intent, their yani, irada, their desire will be Wa alaykum salam Mata aqilu anillahi al-khitab When will I comprehend the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When will I as dajiru? Mata a'tabiru Yani when will I be restrained? When will I be able to restrain myself, be restrained by the Qur'an? When will I take heed to the warning or learn the lessons that are found in the Qur'an? And this is because the Qur'an is ibadah. وَلَا تَكُونُوا بِغَفْلَةٍ وَاللَّهُ مُوَفِّقْ لِذَلِكَ Yani this need, the necessity for comprehending the Qur'an, for reflecting upon the Qur'an, for contemplating what we are reading in the Qur'an, the need for this 
is because the Quran is, yani reciting the Quran is worship. And it will not be worship. Yani it will not be considered as real worship if a person is in ghafla. If they are inattentive to what they are reading. If they are heedless. If they are unmindful of what they are reading, then it will not be worship. And in the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept the supplication from the heart that is ghafil, lahin, that is inattentive, that's unmindful, Allah doesn't accept their dua because the person is supplicating without paying attention to what they're saying. They're just saying words. And the same way we might be reading the Quran, may Allah save us from such, without paying attention to what we're reading. Yani we may be paying attention to reciting the letters correctly, pronouncing the sounds properly, making long vowels long and short vowels short, but we're not paying attention to the meaning, which is the real intent of re reading the Qur'an. So the Shaykh, he says, this need for this contemplation, reflection upon the Qur'an, is because tilawatul Qur'an ibadah, it is worship. وَلَا تَكُونُوا يَعْنِي عِبَادَةٌ بِغَفْلَةٍ It will not be worship if we are inattentive, unmindful of what we were reciting. وَاللَّهُ مُوَفِّقْ لِذَلِكَ and Allah is the one who gives success, who, ma who makes a person have the ability to reach this level where they will contemplate on the Qur'an, they will understand the Qur'an, and then they will also act upon it. This is a quote from Al-Imam Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Hussein Al-Ajuri, Rahimahullah. The Shaykh says after this, Therefore, فَيَقْرَى وَهُوَ يُجَاهِدْ نَفْسَهُ عَلَى تَحْقِيقِ ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ Yani meaning that which we just mentioned. Yani so the person is reading the Quran and he is yujahid nafsahu. Yani his nafs maybe doesn't want to comply, but he is fighting, struggling, striving to force his nafs to comply to that which he is reading in the Quran. So a person is reading the Quran and he is striving, struggling to force himself. Yani ala tahqiqi dalika to realize, to actualize yani, this affair, yani, understanding, contemplation, reflecting, yani, taking heed to and acting upon that which is in the Qur'an. And it is for this reason that Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, says in some of his books, he said in some of his books, this is a, a short quote, yani, containing a tremendous meaning. قراءة آية بتفكر وتفهم يعني reading one ayah of the Quran بتفكر reflecting upon it thinking about it وتفهم and understanding what is being recited if a person reads an ayah from the Quran and they don't know the meaning and they have to look in a translation then look in the translation if they have to look in a book of tafsir, then look in the book of tafsir to understand what you are reading. Because there is no benefit in reading without understanding. So reading an ayah, one ayah of the Qur'an, while thinking about its meaning, reflecting upon it and understanding it, is khayrun min kiraati khatmatin bi ghayri tadabbur wa tafaham. And if this is better than a person reading the whole entire Qur'an from beginning to end without reflection, without contemplation and without understanding. One ayah that is reflected upon and understood is better than a person reading the whole Qur'an without understanding what they have read. وَأَنْفَ لِلْقَلْبِ And it is more beneficial for the heart. Yani the re reciting of one ayah that a person understands can benefit the heart. Whereas the re recitation of the whole Qur'an without contemplating, without understanding will not have any effect. So this one ayah that one contemplates upon, reflects upon, ponders over, understands and comprehends is better than reading the whole Qur'an without reflection and without understanding. And it is more beneficial to the heart. وَأَدَعَى إِلَىٰ حُصُولِ الْإِيمَانِ وَذَوْقِ حِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ حَلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ And it is also يعني, more conducive. Yani أَدَعَى from da'a, يعني, to invite, right? It is more conducive to achieving Iman and tasting the sweetness of the Qur'an. That a person recites the Qur'an with reflection, contemplation and understanding. This is more conducive to achieving. Yani more likely that a person will achieve Iman 
some degree of iman and they would taste the sweetness of the Quran. This is what the end of the quote from Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah. The Shaykh says, Ayatun wahidatun taqra'uha wa tadabburuha wa tudawi biha nafsak wa tata'ammalu fi ma'aniha khayrun wa anfa min haddin sari'in. That is reciting one ayat from one ayah from the Quran that you read it and you reflect upon it. What to da we biha nafsak, and you use it as a means of medicine for your nafs. Yani you try, you seek to cure yourself the diseases of your nafs of your soul by reading the Quran by reflecting upon the Quran. What tataamal fi maaniha, and you contemplate over its meanings. This is better and this is more beneficial than a person hastily, speedily reading yani, any amount of the Quran. It is this, for this reason, and it is for this reason, that the person who reflects upon even one ayat of the Quran, contemplates on it, seeks to understand it. It is for this reason that some of the salaf, يَقُومُ اللَّيْلِ بِآيَةٍ وَاحِدَةٍ yani Some of the salaf is recorded that some of them would stand in the night prayer for the whole night and recite one ayah of Quran. Yani, many years ago, <laughs> I remember reading this kind of saying and saying to myself, how can somebody just stand all night reading one ayah of Quran? But wallahi, there is no doubt. If a person understands the Quran, it's possible that a person can find the ayah in the Quran that they could recite all night long and not become bored from it and not want to leave it. Because every time you recite it, Allah will give you something in your heart of sweetness and of joy and enlightenment that will motivate and move a person to repeat it again and again and again. Naam, repeat it, repeat it. And the, it has to be that we have read something in the Quran that touched us different than something else that we read, that affected us, that draw our hearts, that Yani to it and make us attracted to it and to have a love for it and a desire yani to read it more and to read it more often and to understand it better. The Shaykh says, Our Prophet والسلام, he spent a whole night bi ayatin wahidatin, yani a night in prayer reciting one ayah. Ta'ala in ibaduka hakim from Surah to Maida, 5th Surah, 118th Ayat. Wallahu musta'an. Yani, this ayat requires some time. Yani, we, we're going to pass by it tonight. But yani, if anybody goes back and reads some of the tafsirs and what has been said about this, yani, the, the surface meaning of the ayat, yani, that, yani, this is, yani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran from the saying of Isa alayhi salam, the Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam recited it one night for the whole night, repeating it over and over and again. He said, if you punish them, فَإِنَّهُمْ ibaduk, Then they are your slaves, your servants. And if you forgive them, then indeed you, in, فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ You are the Almighty, the All-Wise. As far as the tafsir of this ayat, yani the clear in, meaning of it is that yani in this ayat, the Prophet ﷺ, he is taking this meaning. That Allah in tu'adhibhum, yani if you punish them in the hellfire, or whatever punishment that you give to them, فَأَنَّهُمْ ibaduk, They are your ibad. Meaning you are their master, you are their creator. You have absolute right to do with them whatever you will. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will not punish a person unjustly. But He has the ability, He has the right to do so. But if you forgive them, يعني, وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Then, indeed, you are Al-Aziz, the Almighty, who can do whatever you will. No one can stop you. يعني, if you intend something, there's nothing that can prevent you from doing it. But because you are Al-Hakim, then Hakim, يعني, حكمة, it means to put everything in its proper place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not put the people who believe in Him and obey Him in the hellfire. That wouldn't be Hikmah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not put the people who worship other than Him, who disbelieve in Him and disobey Him in the paradise. That will not be hikmah. So Allah, He is Al-Aziz, the one who is mighty, 
He has the power and ability to do whatever he wills and no one can stop him, yet he is Al-Hakim. And so he puts everything in his proper place. So the Prophet Sallallahu he is reciting this ayat. And yani, the scholars of Tafsir have given so many meanings to it, but this is the yani, core meaning of it, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala He is the master of all his creatures. If he punish them, he has the right to do so, but he does not punish unjustly. He does not punish unjustly. And if he forgives, it's because he knows his servants. And so he forgives those who are deserving of his forgiveness, who have done those things that entitle you to forgiveness. Yani who, have, who have repented to him, who have asked for his forgiveness and his mercy, then he is forgiven, merciful. It also is mentioned here, yani in the Musnad of Imam, I'm sorry, وَجَاءَ فِي الصَّحِيِّ يعني في الصحيح البخاري عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه that a man heard another man reciting قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد يعني قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد here it means the surah, surah al-ikhlas يعني sometimes يعني the people in the past they didn't يعني usually refer to surahs by the, by the names that we know them by today but they refer to them by something in that surah that makes the surah known Yani it's reported in the Sahih al-Bukhari from Abu Sayyid al-Khudri that a man heard another man reciting this surah, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Yuradidduha, repeating it over and over and over again. So when the morning came, that, mer- that man who heard somebody reciting this, he came to the Prophet wasallam and he mentioned it to him. وَكَأَنَّ الرَّجُلُ يَتَقَالُهَا Yani it is as though, it was as though this man saying this to the Prophet ﷺ, thought little of this. He thought little of it. He didn't think that it was much. This man is just repeating this little thing over and over and over again. There's not much to it. Yani he had disdain for it. So the Prophet ﷺ made him to understand this surah. Four small ayahs from the Qur'an. Kul huwa Allah ahad, to the end of it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ إِنَّهَا La ta'adilu thuluth al-Qur'an. That I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul. That indeed this surah is equal to one third of the Qur'an. Is equal to one third of the Qur'an. So this also makes us to understand that a person might not recite the long surahs. Like Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran and Surah Al-Nisa. They might recite a small surah. Like Kulhu Allah Had, or like Inna Atayna Kal Kautha, or Wal Asr. They might recite a small surah, but if they recite it with reflection, with contemplation, with understanding, comprehension of its meaning, then this is something that is very great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person reflects upon, ponders over, and contemplates even one eye of the Quran, Ta'ishu Maha Laylatan. Yani they spend the night with it, with one ayah from the Quran. To dawi biha nafsak. Yani treating one's sicknesses of the nafs. Wa tu aliju biha mard al qalb qalbak. And yani seeking to cure the sickness of one's heart. Wa tu qawi biha imanak. Strengthening one's iman. Wa tu qawi biha tawakulak. Yani strengthening one's Reliance upon Allah, dependence upon Allah, and strengthening with it, sidqaqa ma'allah, yani one's, yani being truthful to, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wasilataka billahi, and one's connection to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, this is khayrun laka min antumdi at tilawa hadhan bidun aqlin wala fahmin. Yani the person who recites even one ayah of the Quran with contemplation and reflection with comprehension and understanding, seeking to cure the sicknesses of their soul and the sicknesses of their heart and seeking it as a means of strengthening their iman and their tawakkul ala Allah, their trust and dependence upon Allah. And the Shaykh mentions some ayats later on in, the, uh, in this topic, not tonight. He mentions some ayats in the Quran that as examples of what type of ayats a person could use for different kinds of things. But if a person is reciting something from the Qur'an, intending by it to strengthen their iman, by the recitation of that ayat, their iman became stronger. Their iman rose, their iman increased. Their trust in Allah, yani increased. And their truthfulness with Allah, being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and their connection to Allah is strengthened by it, then this is better for them 
than that they spend their night hurriedly, yani hastily racing through the Quran without comprehension and without understanding. And the last matter, <coughs> the last matter of the three matters that the Shaykh mentioned, he said three things that the haq, haq tilawatul Quran, the right of the Quran, yani reciting, yani the way it should be recited uh, involves three things. The third of them is al amal bil Quran al Karim, yani acting upon the noble Quran. The first of them we said is what? Qiraatul Quran, Husn al Tilawatihi, wa Hafdu ma tayassara, yani reciting it, reading it properly, yani carefully, and memorizing some of it. The second of them is? Contemplating, tadabburu wa tafaham, contemplating, reflecting, understanding, and the third of them is acting upon it. Yani a person has to read and recite the Quran and memorize some of it. They also have to contemplate on it, reflect upon it, comprehend it, understand it, and then they also have to act upon it. This is the third of the three matters that are the right of the Quran upon us, al-amal bil Quran, and the Shaykh discussed this in some detail. I don't know if I'll be able to complete it. Uh, I'll try. Yani. <laughs> the third matter is acting upon the Quran. No doubt, yani, this is the objective of recitation of the Quran. This is the objective of comprehending, understanding the Quran. For what? In order to act upon it. Otherwise, the rest of it, yani, the person who memorized the Quran, very beautiful, mashallah, there's no real benefit if they don't act upon it. Al-Hasan al-Basri, yani, from the imams of the Tabi'een, second generation of the Muslims, from the great scholars of Islam, he said, Unzila al Quran li yu'amala bihi fattakhidu tilawatahu amalan. The Quran has been revealed for the purpose of you acting upon it. Li yu'amal bihi, that you act upon it. Fattakhidu tilawatahu amalan. So take its tilawa as action. Yani, meaning make the recitation of the Quran action, not just speech coming from your mouth. Make your tilawa of the Qur'an action, acting upon it, implementing it. Indeed, that which the Qur'an has, wa salam, has been revealed for its, the purpose that it has been revealed for is that we act upon it. And that we could be from the Ahlul Qur'an. Ahlul Qur'an, the people of Qur'an. وَلَا يُمْكِنْ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ بِمُجَرَّدْ حَفْظِ حُرُوفِهِ أَوْ تِلَاوَةَ آيَاتِهِ وَصُورِهِ فَقَدْ It's not possible that a person could be considered from the Ahlu Qur'an by simply memorizing its letters and reciting its verses and its chapters alone. Rather, it is of a necessity that the person has to understand its meanings. And it is of necessity that the person must act upon this Great book, the Quran. Al Imam Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, he spoke about some of the Qura of his time. Qura mean the people who are experts in reciting Quran. But that that expert recitation of Quran is not like it is today. Even it wasn't even in his time. There were people who were like what we see today. He spoke about some of the Qura of his time. Keeping in mind that he's from Kibar Ulama Tabi'een. He's from the major scholars from the second generation of Muslims, the Tabi'een. Yani second generation, right after the time of the Prophet Sahaba. Yani the generation of people who came right after the companions. That's a long time ago. He's from that time, and he's talking about people in his time, and he said that one of them would say that I have read the whole of the Quran, and I haven't omitted, I haven't missed one letter of it. He means by this, that he atkana hafdahu wa jawwada tilawatahu haqqaqa makharijahu. Yani that he recited it perfectly. He memorized it well and he recited it well, good. And he, yani, recited the letters, the letters and the words pronouncing every letter from its makharaj. Meaning, yani, reciting the, every letter properly. He did all of that. That's what he means that he did. That's what that person was saying. I recited it all very well. And then Hassan al-Basri, he says, وَقَدْ وَاللَّهِ أَسْقَطَهُ قُلَّهُ I swear by Allah, he has missed all of it. He missed all of it. 
you don't see in him from the Quran anything of character or action. You don't see the Quran in his character. You don't see the Quran in his behavior. You don't see the Quran in his, in his, in his deeds, in his worship. It's just, mashallah, beautiful recitation. Hatta inna ahaduhum, he said, even to the extent that one of them will say, indeed, I have read the whole a surah in one breath. Yani without taking a pause. Wallahi ma haulai bil qura, wala ulama, wala hukama, wala wara'a. Mata kanat al qura mithil hadha. Yani he said, I swear by Allah. These people are not Qura, reciters of Qur'an. They are not ulama, scholars. They are not hukama, yani people of wisdom. Hukama is the plural of haqim. Yani, hukam is the plural of hakim. Here he, say, he means what? Hukama, people of wisdom. They are not from the people of wisdom. They are not the people of pi piety and righteousness. As long as they are reciters like these people who recite perfectly, but don't act upon any of it. Then he supplicated, he said, لَا كَثَّرَ اللَّهُ فِي النَّاسِ مِثْلَ هَؤُلَاءِ May Allah not increase the like of these people amongst the people. Don't make more of these people. The Shaykh says, the recitation of the Quran is not simply reading. It is not simply, simply memorizing its letters. Rather, it is of necessity that one reflect. It is of necessity that one act upon it. وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْقُرْآنِ يُسَمَّ تِلَاوَ Yani acting upon the Qur'an, yani doing what the Qur'an requires of us, this is called tilawa. Yani usually we say tilawa mean reciting the Qur'an. Somebody just you know, recites the words of the Qur'an. But here the shaykh is saying acting upon the Qur'an in Arabic language is also called tilawa. Acting upon it, not just saying, pronouncing the words. So if, a prayer, if you pray, your prayer is tilawa for the Qur'an. Your salat, that's tilawa. If you fast, your fasting is tilawa to the Qur'an. And likewise, the rest of your acts of worship, doing them is considered tilawatan lil Qur'an. Yani any act of worship you do, that's considered tilawa to the Qur'an. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, yani in Surah Al-Shams, in 91st Surah, for instance, he mentions the second ayah, وَالشَّمْسِ وَدُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا Yani the sun and its brightness, and the moon following it, the sun, the moon following it. وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا 91st surah, second ayah, اَيْ تَبِعَهَا تَلَاهَا It means, تَبِعَهَا, follows it. Yani meaning, the moon following the sun. فَالْإِتِّبَاعَ Following, adhering to something, following strictly something, is from the meanings of tilawa. And the Qur'an has only been sent down for this reason. That is, that the tilawa of the Qur'an, that it be action, that we act upon it. Yani, that the person act upon it. And in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, Sufyan al-Thawri mentions from Abdul al-Masul radiallahu anhu, would not mention in the book here, yani, يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ This ayat, يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أي يَتَّبِعُونَهُ حَقَّ اِتِّبَاعِهِ Yani that reciting it with the way it should be recited, it means following the Qur'an the way it should be followed. So when you are reading the Qur'an and you pass by in it awamir, commands, وَنَوَاهِن Prohibitions وَزَوَاجِرْ Yani those curbs or checks on you that yani restrict you or limit you. وَقَوَارِعْ Yani those ayats that contain تَخْوِيف Yani fearful things. Yani they put fear in you. When you came across those things. وَمَوَائِذْ Admonitions. وَتَذْكِرَاتْ Reminders. وَبَصَائِرْ Yani those yani penetrating, keen, yani insightful ayats from the Qur'an. فَمَا حَذُّكَ مِنْهَا so what is your portion? Yani what is your share from these ayats of the Qur'an when you pass by them? Yani do you reflect upon those commands, those prohibitions, those admonitions, those reminders, or do you just pass by them? Yani passing. Yaqulu Abdul ibn Masur radiallahu anhu, إِذَا سَمِعْتَ 
إذا سمعت الله يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا فأرعها فأرعها سمعك فإنه إما خير يأمر به أو شر ينهى عنه يعني عبد بن مسعود رضي الله عنه he said if you hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying oh you who believe and whenever you hear in the Quran that which begins with oh you who believe then give your ear to it your hearing your listening and listen attentively for indeed it is either something good that you are commanded to do or it is something evil evil that you are prohibited from and this is a tremendous yani, advice from Abdul bin Masood that when we're reading the Quran pay attention when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh you who believe pay attention something is coming here that you have to do yani, either some good that you are commanded with or some evil to refrain from As far as the one who, if you are one of those who does not listen attentively, doesn't give your ear to it, and those ayats pass by you as though, يعني الأمر لا يعنيك, it's not of your concern, it's not related to you. As though the message is for someone other than you, like the khutbah in Jumu'ah, when the imam is saying something about the people who did such and such and so and so, and you're looking around at other people like it's them. So we read the Qur'an and it's as though this is not for me, this is somebody else that Allah is talking about. The Shaykh said, if that's you, so when will you benefit from the Qur'an? When will the Qur'an have an effect upon you? If as you read it, you're not paying attention that this is for you. Yani, this is for you. When will you then benefit from the Qur'an? For this reason, in this kind of situation, the abd, the human being, is in need of striving against his own self to achieve these three meanings yani of recitation of the Noble Qur'an the first of them is reading it well and memorizing it and recitation of it well and the second of them is husnu at-ta'amul wa tadabbur wa fahm li ma'anihi yani that a person reflect and contemplate and understand the meanings of the Qur'an and the third of them is that a person act upon it, that we act upon it. And finally, yani we're going to stop here. The Shaykh closes here by saying, وَقَدْ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورَ الثَّلَاثَةَ لِلْعِبَادِ yani Indeed, certainly, definitely Allah has made these three matters easy for His worshippers. Allah has made them easy. There's no excuse for anyone not to be able to read the Qur'an to ponder and reflect and comprehend the Qur'an and to act upon it. Allah has made it easy for His ibad. كما قال سبحانه as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Qama 54th Surah 17th Ayat وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Yani indeed, definitely, certainly we have made the Qur'an easy للذِكْر for a person to understand and to remember. So is there anyone who will be yani, reminded by it? Who will take admonition? Who will take heed to it? Allah said He has made it easy for a person to be reminded, to remember, to understand the Qur'an. So is there anyone? Yani some of the scholars of Tafsir said the meaning here, this question Yani istifham here is lil amra. Yani it is a command. Allah is saying, Yani reflect on the Quran, ponder over the Quran, and act upon it. Is there anyone who will do this? Yani where are those who will reflect upon the Quran and then act upon it? Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah says, Yassarahu li dhikr, wa yassarahu al fadahu, wa yassara al fadahu lil hivdi, wa maanihi lil fahm, wa awamirahu wa nawahi. للامتثال يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى and this ayat the meaning of it is that Allah has made it easy for, for it to be a means of remembrance Allah has made its expressions its wordings easy for memorization and He has made its meanings the meanings of the Quran easy to be understood and He has made its commands and its prohibitions easy to comply with them يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى preceded this Yani statement with laqad. Yani definitely, certainly Allah has made 
the Quran easy to recite, to memorize, to understand, and to act upon. So where is the one who will do so? Yani who will recite the Quran the way it should be recited? Yani meaning read it properly, recite it properly, reflect upon its meanings, comprehend it, and then act upon it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. We have a minute or so before the adhan. If there's a question about what we talked about tonight. Question about what we talked about tonight. Now, Muhammad. When you were saying that they would recite the ayah all night long. Now. Would they repeat it over and over again? Repeat it over and over again. In some of the narrations of the hadith, it's even mentioned that that's all that they would recite in the salat. Some of the hadith mentioned in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. There are a few hadith mentioned. Yani under the first ayah that came in this topic here. And some of those hadith have some weaknesses. Some of them yani, also are considered to be hasan by some of the scholars. And there's the mention there of the Prophet وسلم, reciting this ayat that we mentioned early on. And that he recited it in his salat. And that's all he recited in the salat the whole night. Yani, he stood in the prayer, he bowed, he prostrated, and he stood up again and he only recited yani, this one ayat of the Quran. Again and again and again and again, reflecting upon it, contemplating, pondering over its meanings, yani seeking to allow it to enter into one's heart, yani to accept it, to submit and to surrender to it. And this is what is required of us, that we accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has delivered to us, accept this message, yani understand it, comprehend it, reflect upon it, ponder over it, yani think about it. Don't just read it in passing, but let it enter into your heart and don't let it go. And don't let it go. If it means you have to read it again and again and again, keep reading it until your heart accepts it, until you surrender, submit, and comply. Uh, Saad. Can we do this? Is this permissible to do it in the uh, Fard Salat? The in the Fard Salat? Yeah. <laughs> not like, um, but like, um, it's permissible. I mean, there are some schools of fiqh that say I mean, you can't, um, you have to recite at least three ayahs from the Quran. I mean, in any raka, you can't recite less than three ayahs, but there's no proof for this. Yani, there's no any injunction from the Prophet ﷺ clearly stating you must recite at least three ayats of the Quran. So if a person recited one ayat, then it's possible. Yani, for example, yani, what if a person recited ayat al-Kursi? Yani, would that be sufficient? If a person recited ayat al-Kursi, for example, reflecting on its meanings, yani, would it be? Yani, would a person yani, read, read it one time and be content with it? Or would they feel a need to read it again and again and again? And there are ayats in the Quran that are short. It doesn't have to be a long ayat. It could be a short ayat. The ayat that yani, is reported authentically that the Prophet ﷺ recited is a very short ayat. It's not a long ayat. And there are ayats that might be shorter, that, a per, that might affect the person's heart, and they want to reflect upon it and let it into their heart. Now, Imam. Now. Naam, as far to recite Al-Fatiha, Naam. Even if a person didn't recite anything after Al-Fatiha, it's permissible. Subhan- after the adhan, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa hamdika. Shadwan la ilaha ila anta staghfiruka wa tubi ilaykum.